This week's sponsor, KR Couriers and Transport Limited, are best known as being a Northwest based company who deliver newspapers and magazines for local news agents and superstores. You'll find all the information within the description. Please give them a follow. Thank you. Hello, Billy. How are you doing? Hello, Gordon. Hello, so welcome to the Billy Moore podcast. And today's special guest is Gordon Hill, aka the Wheelstone Raider. Thanks for coming down. How are you, my mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very, very much. Right. Right. How popular are you, mate? Uh, that's not for me to say. Well, you've been out with me a couple of nights. Yeah. So, what, what would you say? I'd say, mate, you got mobbed. Gordon got mobbed everywhere he went in Liverpool. You were on the karaoke last night, singing a good few songs. You had everyone up dancing. That's you because know. of you, mate. That's all because of you. <laughs> so tell us, right, tell us a little bit about yourself, right? Well, uh, what's that to say? I'm, th- I'm 56 years old. Today, I- by the way, happy birthday. Thank you very, very much. Uh, well, I've just, it's been an uneventful life until eight years ago when I went to a football match in Brighton. Wolfstone is my love of, love my best football team, the love of my life, and uh, we went to an away match in uh, Brighton where I was bullied by two big people. Yeah. Uh, someone threw me retaliating, I was a bit intoxicated, but, uh, and next thing I know, it went viral. Uh, it's had over, over about 40 million hits. Since then, I've been a bit of an internet star, I've made excess of a million pounds for charity and I'm a patron I'm privileged to be patron of a charity called Life for a Kid Foundation in Hull Brilliant So this was in 2013 you went to a match Yeah And yeah. your life just changed Yeah Right now I've read a little bit about you a lot of people know who you are yeah. and to see the way people were reacting yesterday and over the weekend you know seeing you Yeah That must be overwhelming sometimes because it can be a bit like Overpowering, can it? It can be. It can be a bit scary at times. But Liverpool is a beautiful city. Mm. Uh, and I'll tell you what, you get a bad press, but I've never had a bad experience in Liverpool. You are the nicest people I've ever met. And I'm not just saying that, because I'm here. This is the, I made a decision to come to Liverpool for my birthday yeah. to meet some of the nicest people on earth. And you're most welcome. It has been. It's been a pleasure having you here. So... Before we go into in, into your life today, tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up for the viewers. Because for you, you know, you're 56 today, by the way. So big happy birthday! Thank you, thank you. Um, so tell us a little bit about where are you from? I'm from a place called Wolfstone in uh, Wolfstone. Yeah, Wolfstone. <laughs> it's by Wembley for people that don't know London very well. Yeah. Uh, I'm a Londoner, born and bred. Uh, basically, just. I had a non-eventful life until the uh, video came out. You must have come on. Don't like put yourself down a little bit. You've had a you've had a life. You've been a singer. You've you know you've been you've worked in in the past as well, haven't you? I still work now. I still work in a warehouse. You still work in a warehouse. Yeah. Brilliant. But what was you doing prior? Uh, I was a builder. Yeah. Uh, and then something happened. I fell out with the bloke I was working for. Became unemployed for about six months and got offered a job in a warehouse. Uh, can I mention the warehouse? Yeah, is it? yeah you want. Uh, if you don't mind, it's a firm called Orbital Fasteners. We're based in Watford. If you need nuts, boats, screws or anything like that, <laughs> we're the people to come to. Big shout out there to you. So what was it like growing up in school, going up in school and stuff? Uh, I was bullied. I was bullied a lot, which is the way I speak and the way I eat. But it toughened me up. It made me, uh, I wouldn't say negative life, it, uh, more positive than anything. I had, to, I had to fight to survive, so, but it's part of life, isn't it? It's part of character building, as See, I do it. So there's nothing worse, you know, more than I hate than bullies, mate. You know, I'm a, I was like a rebel without a cause. My brother's <laughs> being bullied, I've been yeah. bullied. Yeah. You know, I'm, I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of bullies. I was small as a kid, <laughs> you know, little knobbly knees, shock of ginger hair, loads of freckles. <laughs> didn't feel... Um, 
good about myself, went to school. I know the kids at the time didn't make me feel good about myself. Is that the kind of experience you had? Yes, definitely, definitely. So you were getting like but ridicule for your size and yeah. you know the glasses yeah. and yeah. The way I've speak, uh is that something? Have you ever ever had a speech impediment? Is it just? Uh, I have a speech impediment. Uh, I wear dentures. Uh, I actually, I was born with a blood disorder, uh, a, a rare form of leukemia. Oh yeah. Uh, till toxoplasmosis. Uh, I wasn't supposed to live. I was lucky to be alive, and doctors did me six months to live. Fifty-six years later, I think I proved them wrong. You certainly have, mate, you certainly have. So growing up in school, you found that, you know, you were getting bullied. How did that have an impact on, you know, the world around you? Did you kind of, like, isolate and separate yourself? Was you quite lonely with it all? Uh, was I was. I, was I, I, I still, I still like my own company. Yeah. I've still got lots and lots of friends. I like other people, as you know. Yeah. But I, st- I don't mind my own company. I always just sit there. Uh, so... It's hard to explain. Growing up, it wasn't hard. People have it a lot harder than I do. There's people out there, and so I'm not going to sit there feeling sorry for myself. My dad taught my dad, I had the best dad in the world. He taught me how to, my dad was a professional boxer, he taught me how to box. Uh, my brother, God bless him, taught me how to street fight. And funny enough, once I learned to defend myself, I weren't bullied, <laughs> believe it. Mm. And, uh, it was character building. It was character building. Made me the person I am today. And I hope, if not, I'm a nice person. I hope so. That's not for me to say. That's for other people around me. Yeah, no, you, I've, I've only like, briefly met you and, you know, I find you quite pleasant and, and it's good to be around you. You know, but what I did observe is, like, when you were getting the... Uh, you know, a lot of attention over the weekend, it's... It must be, it must be a struggle. So. It can be. It can be. Uh, because I feel this is what I see and that's how I see it and I was talking to someone about it someone like myself compared to someone like yourself yeah. right in stature I think a lot of people are going to be a little bit more wary about coming over to me and, and saying what they say yeah especially yeah. to you, you know, because you've got you've got that cliche haven't you that yeah. do you want Sam and yeah what is it you want Sam you want Sam <laughs> I'll <laughs> do it you'll do with me <laughs> yeah, I'll no do offense. it yes <laughs> so you're getting all that from from like drunken you know, like, talking, yeah. like, out the people who are out having a laugh and, you know. If I can make somebody happy, it's worth going out. Yeah. It's a miserable world we're living in at the moment with the pandemic and people with no money and everything else. I'm in a privileged position. People do like to see me. They, I can make people happy. That is a, that is a privilege. That is an ultimate privilege. Yeah, it's seeing you. I see you. I see you. You last night, and and you do make people happy, and it's, you know, it's quite warm. So, right, you've learned to defend yourself. Your dad is he is he with us still? Your dad? No, he passed away in nineteen ninety three. So, how old was you then? Uh, my dad was seventy five. Looked a good old days, didn't he? Yeah. How about your mum? Did you have a good relationship with your mum? Uh, she died when I was seven. Wow. And both my mum and dad died. On Good Friday, 20 years apart. Really? Yeah. How, how eerie is that? Do you have any memories of your mum? Nah. Not nah. at all? Nah. Even as a seven-year-old? Nah. Nothing? So, how, what did you, you know, so when you, you were like, you were getting to an age of, of knowing and understanding, did you always like, ask your dad about the memories and... My dad didn't like talking about it. No. Uh, he was with her for a very long time. They, actually, they met in a concentration camp. My mum was Jewish. You're messing? Yeah, they met wow. in a concentration My dad was a prisoner of war, so he was Jewish. And he took, he, he, they, they escaped. And they got married. They had me, my brother, and four sisters. I've got four sisters. I had four sisters. You had? Yeah, I've got two left now. Uh, but... Most of my life indoors, as I said, I had the best dad in the world. He was absolutely amazing. Nothing is too bad for him. Nothing too much. Wow. That sounds, um, you know, it's an incredible. It's incredible to have, a, you know, someone as loving as your dad yeah. in your life and, and, and being I, able to speak about it because I always wished I had that. All right. It was yeah. a bit different for me. Yeah. You know, it was a bit of a tough upbringing and I never had that experience of, like, a loving father, which... I always like strive for 
And yeah. wanted to yeah. but it never kind of fucking pans out. Mm. So yeah, I can be a little bit envious. Yeah. At the same time, I'm glad that you've got that, you've had that in yeah. your life. Thank you, thank you. I think I was only young. I uh, my sister was a couple of years older than me, Denise. So basically he had, he had to put up with four children under the age of sixteen. That's a big responsibility really, isn't it? And so he had to work and yeah, I think he done well. I'll tell you what. I whatever I've achieved, I will never be as great as my dad. Never. Never. That's some statement that, isn't it? Yeah. So he's obviously, you know, he was a big, big um he was a big rock in your life. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So what was it like when he he passed away? How how did you cope? Uh I didn't. No. Uh when I was growing up with touching I was a really horrible little bastard. Pardon my French. Uh my dad passed and changed me. I promised him on his deathbed I would never get arrested. And so far I managed to keep that promise. Uh, all the charity stuff, I am a patron for charity, I do that in my dad's name, my memory of my dad. So he didn't get the privilege of being that famous as me. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it for him, I'm doing it for him. And I hope when I see him again one day, he's proud of me. Yeah, I'm sure he is, mate. And I, you know, I can see how upset it's making you the thoughts of it, because it, it's, it obviously... Um, it's touching a you know a raw yeah, thank nerve, you, thank you. you know, and um, I appreciate you speaking about it. And sometimes you've got to get these questions asked. And we oh yeah, 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 you definitely. Know. So you've you had a, you had four sisters, and there's only two left. And you, what age was you? Was you the oldest, youngest? I'm the youngest. I'm the baby. You're the baby. Yeah. Or well, as my brother used to tell me, the one of the litter. <laughs> the one of the litter. <laughs> so did you? Did, was he that? Was he just being joking with you? Oh, he was joking. He's yeah. my brother was a bit of a. Uh, player when he was growing up. We only actually got to, got to know each other properly when my father passed away. Yeah. He was living out the area, I found him, told him about the father and he's not, he, re, he didn't only become my brother, he became my best friend. That's brilliant. That's the same as my brother. You know, not only has mm. he become my brother, he's become my best friend. That's good, isn't it? And yeah. he's, he's, like as we spoke before, he's, you know, being subjected to, to bullying and yeah. he's got autism. So oh, he's right, got a disability, shit, yeah. my brother Joe. Uh, he's got the, the mindset of a young like child. I mean, yeah. at least about six, seven. Oh, you know, shit. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's in his forties. Yeah. Don't don't be sorry because he's 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 just as famous as you. Yeah. Good. He's Did. A, he's a little bit of an internet celeb. Good. Did. So he's, he's he's lovely. He's a, he's a great soul. But you know, when my pa- my dad passed away and, and and the same kind of experience, yeah. he was just there. But now we've. We've we've come together and we've built a relationship up where it's loving and it's caring and, and I feel that my journey in life is to benefit him and give him a better quality of life and that's all I want. You know, yeah, for, for uh, my sure family you and do. my friends. Sure you do. I, I, I met you the last couple of days. You got a big heart, Billy. You got a big heart, mate. You seem you written out for me last night. I've noticed that. Uh, someone, as you said earlier on, some bloke got the answer. I was chatting to two girls. Yeah. You sorted it out for me. So you, didn't uh, fi- you didn't think I noticed that? I did. <laughs> so, um, he's a bit of a player. Uh, uh, Gordon, he had uh, two young shorts hanging off your arm. Yeah. They were all over you. This other fella got a bit jealous, didn't have yeah. a clue who you was. Yeah. Looked at you being small, yeah. glasses, with these two birds, bounced over, yeah. started giving it the uh, the almighty one. Yeah. I have to tell him to fuck off before I smash his head in. <laughs> Thank you. Basically, you know, I don't like bullies, especially nah. someone towering over someone small. Yeah. So, you know, don't worry, base. We've got your back, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of other people have. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, there's a lot of good friends in um, in this city that are here to yeah, support yeah. you. But you know what? I I can just see how you've you've grown up. You know, with all that bully mentality. Yeah, I hate bullies. I detest them. I can defend myself. I see bullies. It's, it's, not, it's an only, not only physical, it can be verbal and all. And sometimes the verbal bullying is worse than the physical. Believe me, I've, I've dealt with both. So what I understand because I phoned your phone and your voice recording was saying this is good, you know, any, yeah. any abuse yeah. will be getting sent to the police. Yeah. You know. I've had death threats. I've. Uh, 
I tell you a story, my brother passed away uh, a year later, I was doing a, an event, and normally if I don't know the number, I don't answer the phone, but I was waiting for a promoter to pick me up, and so my phone rang, and it was exactly a year to the day since my brother passed away, and I answered the phone, they went, we're looking for my brother's address, uh, we've been driving around for a year now with a taxi firm. He owes us so much. Evil bastards. Mm. Evil. Well, people do that, mate. You know what I mean? And you, you heard people laughing in the background. Yeah. What sort of shit bastard does that? You've had, yeah, it's, you know, that, that's the people that you've got out there, mate. You know, narrow-minded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just want to humiliate others for their yeah. own kind of satisfaction. Yeah. You know, you get it all over social media. I mean, you must have had it on social oh, media. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, social media is a is a big platform for bullies because the shitbags, because what happens is, you know, they've got no fear behind the screen. Nah. You can sap away. Keyboard warriors. Yeah, you're never going to front it, mate. You know that. You know that. The only way to stop it is when you sign up for a site, Facebook, Instagram, whatever one, you have to have proof of ID. Yeah. You have to prove who you are. That way... They can't behind. They can't hide behind the screen. They're known. They're public. So then we can prostitute them. Yeah. If not, they you can have you can open up. I just open up a Facebook account with Mickey Mouse, mm. and abuse you. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows. So that's why they do it. And half the time, the people that shag you off on social media will be the first person to come up and ask for a selfie. Yeah. Fucking crazy, isn't it? Yeah. You know, the be- you, they, they, they are your best friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in in, in real life, yeah. they, they, they pretend. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Save your comments for um, someone else, thanks. Yeah. So, tell us about your team, the Wheelstone Raiders. It's, not, it's actually Wheelstone, I'm the way. Wheelstone? It's <laughs> <laughs> almost yeah. Uh, tell us about Wheelstone. Well, what it was, when, I, when we were growing up, uh, we didn't have a lot of money, so I wanted to go football. I was an Arsenal fan, my dad was Tottenham. Uh, he wouldn't come to Arsenal, I wouldn't go to Tottenham. And I was born in Wolfstone, and one day he took me to a Wolfstone game. I still remember it, I was 14 years old, I don't know, 78, I was 12 years old, sorry. Uh, and we played a team, Italian team, to Udinese. We won 2 1. And I'll tell you what, that day I fell in love with Wolfstone Football Club. And it's still a big part of my life. I don't go as often as I should. Uh, but most of the people there, I've known all my life. Uh, long before I was the Raider. And I will, I will be friends with them long after I'm the Raider. And it's a big part of my life. And so much, everybody says, they are, my team is a family. They look after me through fit and thin. Before I was the Raider, the way I spoke, we've had some fun. We've had some good days. Like all football fans, we've had some bad days. But, yeah, it's, it's, nice, it's a nice family club. It's very family-orientated. And I prefer non-league football than I do to the Premier League. Yeah. You don't get fancy prima donnas pulling up in Rolls Royces. In non-league football, whether it's Wolfstone or any non-league team, the, the players actually drink with the fans. They're part of the football club. Not like these fancy... Prima Donna Premier League Championship footballers. So who was you playing that day that um, the video went viral? Uh, a team based in Brighton, Whitehall. And it is a shit hole. I'm telling you. <laughs> and it was it. an away game. Yeah. <laughs> how many fans have how many fans went away that day? From? What we took about three hundred, three hundred and fifty. Well that's pretty decent really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh they had about a hundred. So they were at they were at home. Yeah, and we outnumbered them. <laughs> And this is this is the reason why you were screaming. You yeah. ain't got no fans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you, so you, you was this one of their fans that were giving you? Yeah, two of them. Yeah. And the bloke that filmed it was actually a Wolfstone fan. Funny enough, he doesn't deal with dames anymore. I ain't seen him yeah. since. But he done it to stitch me up. But hey ho. I, 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 I tried to listen this morning. What they were saying? What were they saying? Yeah, they were just taking the Mickey out my voice. What it was and the size of my feet. Just everything, anything to get a rise. And Billy, you're really nice about it. I met you a couple yeah. of times. After about 20 minutes, someone giving you abuse, everybody's got a baiting point. 
Yeah. Even you, you're yeah. a really nice fella. But if, if I if I stood there and abused you for 20 minutes, you'd have a breaking point. Anyone listening has got a breaking point. If you stood there and abused me for two minutes, lads, you'd be fucking... Yeah. I'd drop you like a bag of spuds. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. for you to, to be subjected to 20 minutes yeah. of abuse from two big fellas... Yeah. And I moved away from them a couple of times. They were lucky. If I'd have went down a rough stone end, they wouldn't have survived. Was you willing to go to war with them to fight? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you were ready, like, by the sounds yeah. of it, weren't yeah. you? you yeah, what you there. don't see, you don't see them following me about. You don't hear the abuse that they did me. They took that. Funny, that, isn't it? Yeah. But I've met the two blokes since then. We've done something for ITV called uh, Britain Sees Red. Yeah. They're actually nice fellas. We had a drink together. Yeah. It was the... I'm not even to mention his name. I'm not even to give him the... Air time. Air time. But the bloke who filmed it is Stum. Is what? It's Stum. Complete, utter bastard. <laughs> and that's a fair comment. He deserved that shout, you know. So, this, and you never, right, so you never expected this to go the way it went. Was you just like going about your day, supporting your team, yeah. having a bevy? Yeah. Like you said, a little bit intoxicated, reacting yeah. to abuse, yeah. and then it just went viral. Did they upload this video? The bloke who filmed it uploaded it. What it was, about a week later, my mate phoned me. He said, do you know you're on YouTube? What? Didn't know that. And anyway, I looked at it, and I thought, oh, no. What a prick. <laughs> uh, and first of all, for months, you had, I had about 5,000 views. And I thought, I got away with this. Yes. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, it went mad. From one minute with 5,000 views, it went up to about a million. Then they started all these memes and little Facebook things. <laughs> I was everywhere. And then one day, I was done to work, and I went in to buy a paper. And there I was in the paper. Yeah. And I thought, oh, no. And the president of Wolfstone Football Club, Paul Rubens, right, Told me into football, told me into the boardroom and said, listen, other people are making a lot of money out of this. And we gonna, can we do something? I went, nah, I'll leave it. Carried on, carried on. He told me in a den and uh, lucky enough, someone sponsored the dame just to meet me. And we went in the boardroom and he said, listen, everybody else is making money out of this. I yeah. said, right, let's do it for charity. Uh, his boy is autistic. So we, st I started helping Autistic Concern in Northampton. Brilliant. Uh, I'm still a member of that thing. Uh, so that's where it started. That's where the charity thing. Then I've done something in Chesterfield, Cedarwood, Sobel House. Uh, and I enjoy the charity work. Just being able to make that difference. That Even if it's only a minute difference, I can do that. I've done it. You have made, you know, you've made people smile, and that's just, you know, so you, you're a born entertainer. You know, you wasn't, it wasn't planned, it wasn't a setup. Yeah. You know, you were just actually, you know, doing your own thing and getting on with your day, and, and this went viral, and, yeah. and it just changed your life. Oh, yeah, but I, I also, I hope it changed other people's lives, you know. Because prior to, to, to that, that video going viral, you were virtually like an unknown. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, now it's 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 not like that. Now you can't go. You got the police pulling you up and everything, haven't you? Asking. Yeah, yeah. I was, yesterday, yeah. I was in Liverpool Town Centre. <laughs> the busies pulled me up. Right, two people in the front, two women at the back, asked me for a photo. How brilliant is that? Mm. How brilliant is that? Come on. See, it's you know you're quite you're quite a popular guy. You're quite a popular guy, mm. and you've had, you know, and I feel for you when you were talking about your dad. That I was just thinking about that as you were talking about like you know how much love right that he had for you yeah. and how much love you had for him yeah thank you, you know thank and you. you know the connection you had yeah. and the loss that you're feeling yeah. still yeah you know which was um it's sad and it's, it's the cycle of life that we do lose people you know but at the same time you, you're talking about how you're doing shutting in memory of him yeah. and this podcast will be in memory of your dad thank you, you very, what was very your dad's much. name victor victor you be watching you, yeah. you know, looking down and making sure you're okay. Um, so, you lost a couple of sisters. Yeah. Were they, what happened there? One was in America, she had uh, Parkinson's. Uh, the other one was in Milton Tins, she died of a heart attack. I lost three members of my family in two years. Wow. So, who's that? Who's that? Your two sisters and... Your brother. And your brother. So, yeah. 
Our family was the five years. There were six of us. Six of us, same here. We had six and a half. Yeah, three left. Three left. So, and that, you're the youngest, and there's two. Yeah. So there's yeah, there's uh, my uh, there's Denise, and there's uh, Alona. Alona's in my date. Denise is in the other stuff. Are you a close family? Not really, not. So was you really growing up? Was you a close family, and then you sort of uh, there was a bit there was a bit age difference between us. Uh, so. Not really. I was closer to my brother. Mm. But maybe it's just a boy's thing. And, mm. uh, my sister, I often go down to see my... I don't mind that two or three times a year down to see her. I really lost touch with the one, Denise, and the other stuff. We had a bit of a falling out, which... A bit stupid, really, when you're thinking on the, on the things in general. Yeah. Well, that's it. You can always make amends, you know. It, it, you know, I don't, I don't believe. You know, I believe we all fall. My siblings, I've got siblings, and you know, you know, we were close growing up, and we were fighting with each other. And <laughs> you know, and I go to my mum's yesterday, and and, and the day they're just there. We don't really connect like yeah. we, we should. Yeah. But I feel that we, but my mum's like the glue. Yeah. Of the family. Yeah. It's she's like everyone goes to that. Yeah. It's a hub. Yeah. yeah. It's a family hub. Yeah. Now without my mum, we wouldn't be. Oh yeah, Because yeah. I have no affiliation or relationships with. Um, with my family and I wish, you know, that to change. Not through well, we don't we don't we just we've all got our own lives and we're yeah. all doing our own thing, you yeah. know. We've all got our own families. Um, but how old was you and your dad, had you? I mean how old was your dad, sorry, when you when you uh, were born? My dad was a lot older, he was about forty forty five, when I was nineteen nineteen. When you were born? But he's forty eight. He's forty eight? Yeah. Wow. So that's just because I was just thinking then my little boy, I was forty-seven yeah. when he was when he was oh, born. Right. So I'm putting me, I'm thinking about yeah. like your dad going forward and the age he was yeah. bringing, you know, a young yeah. a young boy into yeah. the world, especially you know after seven years, you, yeah. you've lost your mum yeah. as well. So, you know, how old was you when he passed away? I was twenty-seven. So you had twenty-seven years with him. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 27 beautiful years by the yeah. sound of it. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's what I owe for my son. You yeah. know, oh, definitely. So hopefully, um, you, hopefully you have a lot more. Yeah, you know, hopefully you, you have I, a lot more. You know, more. I've, I've, I've had my, um, see, I've had my scares, I've had cancer, yeah. you know, I've been diagnosed with, with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, oh, right, which is yeah. a form of blood cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you were talking about leukemia, yeah, 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 it was bringing yeah, back, yeah, yeah. you know, the fact that I'd had non-Hodgkin's and it was a stage three above and below the yeah. diaphragm and I didn't think it was going yeah. to ever have kids. And I'm yeah. at a late age, yeah. you see. And I know and and he eventually had this this little boy, and he's he's beautiful, and he's um, it's like my life is more now living for him. Yeah. Like, whereas before Definitely. it was self centered. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was I was abusing drugs. You know anything? I was abusing myself. I was abusing my community. <laughs> you know I was doing things that I didn't want to do, and now you know I've um, you know I've got my shit together basically. Yeah. You know that's well, what you have to you have to for the boy. Yeah. You? you know I was I was. Yeah, definitely. You're right. And I'll tell you what, you must be proud of yourself for doing it. I am. And I feel, right, man to man, that when I was young and I was using, I was in the grip and I was in and out of institutions because I did get arrested. I did go to prison. I didn't go to prison, but I've been arrested a few times. I, I time tabs. I time very tabs. I spent like, a long time, I'd say at least 20 years behind the cells or in, 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 <laughs> in my life. So yeah. I'm talking half of my life has been yeah. in, in solitary confinement. <laughs> Or in some form or another, and most of the, the solace you've spent in me, you don't have to go to prison. You yeah, know, your prison is you can have a prison in your mind. Yeah. So I believe that when I was younger and doing all that, and I've had a child at that age, a younger age, yeah. I wouldn't have been there. Yeah, I'd either been, I'd have been one of those dads where he went, fuck me out. Yeah, I've had my out. favorite fan. Yeah. Yeah, you know, who's he? You know, he doesn't even let on. He doesn't even say hello. He doesn't do nothing for me, man. All that. So I'm glad. Yeah, you're right. I am proud of the fact that I'm being there and I'm standing up. Yeah. And, and being a father. Yeah. You know, so. Have you never had kids? Nah, not that I know of. Not that you know of. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a player, though. Uh, I think I got. I think I have got a kid. You think? But she, she was uh, Nigerian, and when I'm when her mum found out she was pregnant, she got whisked off, and I never see her or the kid again. No. So that was over. F I was nineteen at the time. <laughs> so if it is mine, it would be thirty-seven years old. And I hope whoever it is is doing well. There you go. Let's hope so. So you know, have you, how's your relationships with um, in in life being? Have you have you been married? Have you? No, I don't believe in marriage. I think it's just 
if you love someone, you don't have to get married to do to do that. At the moment, I'm single, so if any women out there want some, <laughs> I'll deal with them. <laughs> if you want some, <laughs> yeah. So your relationships, you know, so we're single, ladies, all, <laughs> the, all the ladies out there. Um, yeah. So you've had a, you've had a few. Uh, so since you've had. It's 2013, it, it became viral in 2014. Yeah. So you're talking from 2014, what have you, what's, what's part of your life taken apart from the charities and, you know, have you been to celebrity uh, events? I don't really do the celebrity events. Good. I do, I've been done to a type of charity. I used to be, uh, play uh, football for CBFC. Yeah. But my ankle did give way and I can't do it anymore. Uh, I've met a few celebrities there. Yes, yeah, so I don't. I'm not really the big celebrity sort of person. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of celebs to be fair mm. myself. Some of them I've met a few, and I think they're so prima donna ish. Right, up their own ass. Yeah. If you haven't got a blue sixty, you don't want to know who you are. If you're, yeah. not, you're not official. You know. I've, I just said I met Ant and Dick. They were brilliant. Yeah. I'm. I can't say I'm friends with Tyson Fury, but I know I'm the Titan. You called Tyson him out, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've met him a couple of times since. He's a good off. He's just as mad in real life as he is. I've met his dad. His dad, right. John's uh, brilliant. John, yeah, John. I met John a couple of months ago. Uh, and he's, just, he's just down to earth. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was an evening with John Fury and he shared his life story and his, his life story was incredible. He's been, you know. But he's also a very generous man. He is. We were in Manchester when I told out Tyson Fury. He dropped me down to the train station. We pulled up on, on the traffic lights. Sorry, John, I know you had at the ump, but I do apologise now. Pulled up on the traffic lights, see some bloke bedding. I mean, this bloke bedding. He pulled over, opened the windows, told him over, pulled a wad of money out of his pocket and handed it to him. Didn't, and then he forgot I was in the back. He didn't do it just to impress me. He forgot I was in the back. I had to remind him that, to get me to the train station. But that's the sort of man John Fury is. He doesn't... If you see him... You see him on TV and everything, makes out he's a bit tough, man. He's got a bit art. And that's where Tyson gets his thing. Tyson, all that money he made from Wilder, he did to homeless charities. Not many, not many people know that. He won't, he won't admit it, but that's true. He's a big, big man, John. He's a yeah. big man. Yeah, and he's got a bit of heart and all. And how did you get on with Tyson? They argue. They argue? Yeah. How did you get on with him? Well, I don't know both. John, it was brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> So you've also had a, 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 a single in the charts, haven't you? Yeah, Duck No Friends, Wolfstone Raider. Who sang that? I did. Go on, give us a little, give us a little chorus. I'm the Wolfstone Raider. You might know who I am. Some of you rappers have got no tunes and no fans. That's why I'm here. Wolfstone Raider. Wolfstone Raider. That's it, boys. <laughs> Listen, by the sun. It's all dose of charity. <laughs> <laughs> it was a number. It was number five in the charts, man. Number five in the national. Number one in iTunes. Number one in iTunes and number yeah. five in the, yeah. in, in the national. It was, it was Christmas nineteen. Oh, 2014, Sorry. So twenty fourteen. So you know, to, uh, straight after you were, yeah. you know, your video was yeah. uploaded. Yeah. You, you were, you were singing songs. Yeah. Fantastic, and all the donations, all all the. Went the to Drake Army Street Hospital, Autistic Concern, and Rushdown Youth Development. Do you know what I noticed about you, right? And I'm a, I'm a great observer of the human race and of people in general. And um, you know yourself, and you know you're not materialistic. You know you're not you're not you're not the kind of you know I've seen not the kind of person. You, I said to you last night, I don't drink. You know, yeah. we were in the um, in the spa, a little bit of karaoke, by the way, yeah. a little bit of fun, living a dream. Yeah. You know, having a good time because we're not here for a long time, so we're enjoying yeah. life. You know, I offered to buy you a drink. You said no, Bill. You've bought me enough, which he hadn't. I was thinking, I haven't bought you a fucking thing. To be mm. fair, I think you'd forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. you might have. But you, you know what, right? And then you were buying other people drinks. You weren't going to fucking pubs and clubs sponging off others. You were, I, I seen what you did last night. Thank you. you, know, Thank you. I seen you put your end in your pocket. And by, never mind, like, which the likes of John Furry and, and, and stuff like that. What you do as well, you know, you know you're, you're very given. You know, you were seeing, you were getting photographs with people who were there, and some of them I could see that were were, were a bit like heavy and getting annoying, and it was like I need to step in if it gets a yeah. bit too much. But then I'm like a rebel without a cause. I'll yeah. fight for yeah. any underdog, me. Yeah. You know. And yeah, thank you. But yeah, you're a, you know, you're, you're not a fucking bum. You're not. We're, we're born with nothing. 
Mm. We're in a dive. Everybody's plot of the item is the, the same. Whether you get to make it, you're all the same. Well, you, we're here for a reason, and we got to be positive. Yeah. I'm not a tater. I don't. I I earn my own money. As I said, most of the things I do, I do for charity. Uh, I earn my own money. I don't. People buy me a drink, I buy them back. So that's the way it should be. It is. Yeah. Yeah. No, have you let, so you you've been arrested a few times. You mentioned that before. Bef- so tell us what was going on there. Where was your other? Uh, the ale. No, I was a bit of a toadhead in in the past. Really? Uh, when I was growing up, I was under servant abuse, do sniffing and all that. Uh, you weren't alone. <laughs> you weren't. You're not alone there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was about. You know, I think everyone was. Well, not everyone, but yeah. Uh, anyway. And then. I was a bad toad head about twenty odd years, uh, and I haven't I haven't touched toad head for over twenty. What is it? Twenty two years now. Powers of you. Um, I give up in millennium, nineteen ninety nine, two thousand that night, and I ain't touched it since. And I'm proud of that. And so you yeah. should be, you know, because it's a it's an addiction that's robbing your soul. You know, it's robbing your oh, community. Yeah, yeah. It's not only yeah. robbing. It makes you greedy. Oh, it's greedy, yeah. It's, uh, I was talking to my missus yesterday. She said, I wonder, you know, she's not into drugs at all, but she was saying, you know, you know, she couldn't see how cocaine was addictive, right, until he explained it. But then she, you know, she, she said, yeah, I understand now. Psychologically. You don't think you're an addict, though? No, see, because it's more of a socially accepted drug. Yeah. Like, you've got the drugs of shame, which is heroin and crack cocaine. Yeah. You know, they're what you class as drugs of shame, so you're embarrassed yeah. to say that you're in... Yeah. involved with that kind of yeah. uh, narcotic but when it comes to cocaine you know you can pull it out in nightclubs in toilets and everyone's having a line and it's sociably accepted in, in that in, in that environment however yeah. you know it doesn't become just shitting you know in, in, in pubs it becomes shitting at home yeah. with the curtains closed yeah. on your own yeah. with the lights off yeah. fucking paranoid yeah. using on your jack yeah. you know and that's where been there done it got the t-shirt yeah like that's solvent abuse as well. You know, I'm I'm talking. Like I sniffed glue when I was well. Look at that. When I was about fifteen, sixteen. Yes, I mean, is that for a fourteen, fifteen? Solvents, you know, air, air fucking air freshness, fucking yeah. gas. Yeah. You know, I was experimenting this stuff while I was at school. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'd seen some weird fucking things while I was under the influence of that shit. Oh yeah. Some crazy psychedelic like hallucinations. Yeah. Uh, that kind of like it was a brief period of my life. But then, you know, other drugs came into to, yeah. to play, and cannabis, which was another gateway drug yeah. for me. Yeah. It's, it's a hideaway, isn't it? Yeah. It's an escapism. So how, so how old is you when you use solvents? Because that's a 14, big... 15, about the same as yourself. Uh, my mates were doing it, so I just... It weren't peer pressure, just to be fitted in, fit in really. Yeah, so you felt it wanted to be a part or something? Yeah. See, I don't know where, where it come from with me. I think it was just um, at school, and we, we, were, we were playing through, and, and we went round to a friend's house whose mum was working through the day, so he has access, and, you know, next thing, solvents were getting pulled out. Yeah. And that was it. It was sort of like that, but then it was, I got to a stage where I was doing it in my bedroom on my own. Yeah, same as that. You know, and... Um, Knitting the money down by it, or knitting the, knitting the dew from the socks, sock lifting. Yeah. Because yeah, they wouldn't sell you glue, would they? No. <laughs> Evo stick? Yeah. Not Evo stick, that's fine. Yeah, Evo stick, yeah. It was Evo. Oh, Evo. Yeah. Sure. Time bond was a bit of buzz. Yeah. Fix it, fix it. We're fucking on the best glue here, you know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, but I see, I give up when I see someone die of it. Yeah. A good friend of mine. Okay, tell us about that. I wasn't actually with him, but. I f- went up, he took it on his own, uh, we think he choked on his own vomit, and I went to visit him in the hospital in St. Pa- uh, St. Mary's in Paddington, he was a vegetable, and before that the bloke was the most funniest, buoyant person there is, and I think that hit home, because uh, you didn't realise the dangers of what you're putting in your body, you thought it's just a bit of fun, but you're telling yourself, you'll show ye. You're poisoning your body. Yeah. Why would one, why would we do that to ourselves? Yeah. Life is precious. Why destroy it? People want to destroy your life for you. Don't help them by doing it yourself. 
You know, because you're, you know, you're committing suicides on a daily basis. If you're slowly driving, in, you might as well get into a car and accelerate into a brick wall. That would be the better way of doing it. You t- just think, it, it, isn't a vegetable? It was yeah. a vegetable. He might, his, might, his brain might still be working. He might be thinking, but he can't move. Why would we want to do that to ourselves? Why would we put ourselves through that? Not only that, his family, his friends, they're all suffering and all. Mm. Why would we do that to his people we love? Exactly, yeah. So it's, 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 we're putting, we're putting a lot of unnecessary pressure and, yeah. you know, fear on <laughs> family. You know, I had a, a mad uncle, still have a mad uncle. I think he's okay. I think I was the mad one. <laughs> but he used to speak in riddles to me and he'd, um, you know, when I was in jail, he'd send me letters and he'd, he'd I, you know, it was qu- quite embarrassing really because, Sometimes the letters would have tea bags in, shell it to a piece of paper yeah. with like a pound note in it or a pound yeah. coin or something, yeah. right? And the, the screws would be like, what's here? What's going on here? And I remember him saying to me, he come up to me, I was in, I was in my mum's, and he was my mum's older brother. And he fucking hated the fact that we, you know, I was a little, yeah. a little swat as a kid as yeah. well. And he was taking drugs and stuff. And he said to me, you know, why don't you just go out and jump, jump in front of a train and lose your legs? Yeah. He said, because, you you know, that's what you're doing. Yeah. He said, you won't have nothing to worry about then. The only thing you'll be worrying about is, like, how are you going to get about? Yeah. He said, about the minute, you know. And he said, uh, you know, he did, he was obviously in his way trying to encourage me and guide me. Yeah. But, you know, with we've, 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 youth comes an air of arrogance, and when yeah. you're young, you know, you know, you're going to live forever, and you're not listening to anyone. And youth is wasted on the young. Yeah, it is. Youth is wasted. On, on the young, you're right. And in hindsight, you know, I wish I could go back. And, that. and I always, you know, the wishes and I could have and I should have and I w- you know, I want. And but being there, doing it, you think that makes you a better person because you've been there, done it, and you've it's achieved. You're doing well for yourself now. Yeah. That's down to hard work for yourself. You've been through that rotty road. You've been through that path. Mm. Don't you think it's better to taste that path yeah. and know what you're doing well now? And thinking back to yourself and thinking, I was a little shit. Yeah. You took me now. You took your boy. You don't want your boy to go through what you went yeah. through. That make, that's, is that going to make you a better father? It certainly does. It's like it's lived experience, isn't it? You need yeah. that lived experience yeah. to go, okay. You know, I've, I've, um, I've been down that path and it's, it's, it's been really unsavoury. Yeah. You know, but now I've got an opportunity to share my experience and offer guidance and support, which yeah. I do, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Right. You know, I give a little bit back to the yeah. community. Mm. You know, I um, I share some of my hardships and experiences with young kids. Yeah. You know, in the hope that they'll go, okay, yeah. I'm not going to go and yeah. make those same mistakes he did. <laughs> sometimes, you know, you'll get through and sometimes you won't. And that's just how it is. You know, I'm not here to say, right, I'm going to yeah. tell you the story, I'm going to change the world. Yeah. It doesn't happen like that. But I actually feel sorry for the youth of today. When we were growing up, we had youth clubs, we had places to do. They haven't got that anymore. The councils to start all the youth clubs. A lot of football clubs are doing the academies, and but not everybody's gifted at football. We need like boxes. We need something structure the youth. Bring bring back youth clubs. Give them somewhere to go. They won't be walking around the streets. Mm. They walk around. They see they've got nothing. They've got no fleets up. They don't. They see the only person doing well is a drug dealer. What are they gonna do? Mm. Start selling drugs. They might not be as gifted a footballer or a boxer, so they take the easy route. We've got to give the youth a chance. No, I agree, but at the same time, I've thought about this as well, because when we were growing up, there was youth centres and, you know, adventure playgrounds, yeah. and there's nothing yeah. like that yeah. these that's, days. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So if we did set up youth clubs and adventure playgrounds, would it be a little bit like unfamiliar for the kids of de- these days? Because they're used to sitting in parks... Yeah, drinking yeah. ale, smoking star dog or whatever they, they smoke yeah. now. The yeah. cheese, um, congregating on street corners. But we no we should have we have to find a way to get them in there, don't we? We have yeah. to find a way. We have to give them an incentive to go there, because being in the den, it's like if you're a member of a youth club, it's like being in the den. That's what I I might be want. Yeah, right. You you're part of something. You're not alone, or you're part of something. That's what a lot of these kids, they join dance, not because they want to be a gangster, because it gives them a, it gives them a, a feeling of community. It yeah. gives them a reason. 
A lot of these people are in the Danes, they're bullied. So they join the they join the Dan to stop being bullied. Uh herd mentality. Yeah. We don't do that, we don't stop the, I I would de utilize drugs. Yeah. So you don't to a chemist, you buy it, you get it on prescription from the doctor or the pharmacist. That way we know what the problem is. You no. can't hide a problem by sweeping it underneath the carpet. No. Right? I know a lot of people would disagree with me, but utilise it or decriminalise it, take it out the back doors, then this damn fairy, these damn these dance would have nothing to do. They would most of the money made from the dance is by drugs yeah. and prostitution. Utilise it, the drugs drug barons I've got no yeah, right. If you legalise it, the government won't be making any money then, will you? No. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the reason why, because they're making they'd have to tax it and everything, you know what I mean? It's with a tax bit out of uh, they fucking tax it, but can you tax, you know, who, who's going to be fucking spending, you know, it's, it's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, to answer, oh, Holland, they had a major dub problem in yeah. the 80s. They decriminalised it, and uh, time rate went down overnight 40%. Speaks for itself. So it's a no-brainer, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's a no-brainer. You know, you're quite intelligent in these areas. You've got a lot to offer, you know, young kids, by the sound of it, and... You know, it's many, many years ago, I was a kid myself. Yeah, we still are. We're still Peter Pans, aren't we? Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think uh, I'm, I'm gonna ever grow up, and I don't really want to. No, I mean, either, but I've got to be mature and responsible. That's something that I've learned over the years, you know, because yeah. when, you, when you're immature and irresponsible, there's plenty of consequences. Yeah, but I hope, yeah, because I'm in the public eye, I have to be more. Vigilance, yeah, yeah. You're in the public eye. So, as you have, you have you had any experiences like since in the since 2013, 2014 of like, uh, like you've had death threats? I was knocked out. I had a beard on the brain. You were knocked out. Tell yeah. us about that. I was uh, running for a bus. I had two bags of sopping. Next thing I know, I woke up in the hospital. Someone decided to punch me. I woke up. I had a beard on the brain. I didn't believe it. I didn't think I had a brain. But they managed to find something in there anyway, so... And they were going to operate, but it managed to heal itself. That was about two years after. And then the bloke was actually boasting about it. He told one of my mates in the pub, Oh, I beat the Wolfstone Raider up. Don't worry, he got his thumb up with it. Uh, but why would somebody do that? I didn't even defend myself. I was running for a bus, I had two bags for shopping. How tall are you? About five foot what? I'm five foot two. Five foot two, you're quite small. Yeah. I feel big. Standing next to you. <laughs> Most people feel you know, big. <laughs> Most people. I feel like a giant. You know, which is uh, different from most guests that I have. They're all usually yeah. taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's I'm, I'm, taller I'm, than me. I'm, prob- I'm probably just wider. <laughs> um, you know what? So it's, it's fucking horrible, mate, today. Yeah. That, you know, there's people out there that actually believe that you, you, you want to front them yeah. not just over this it's it's quite sad really there's sad people out there unfortunately yeah but the majority are quite the, minor- the majority I'd say 99.9% of people have did, heart, did hearts yeah but like everything there was always that 0.1% and all these little call off vids that you do you know they're, they're just a, they're just for a laugh Oh yeah, there's no harm in it. I've oh. seen it, mate. I think I followed you on Facebook, and you were doing cameos, or yeah. I'm not too sure what it was. Yeah, I sent you a message. It was a few years ago now, but I, I didn't really. Um, I don't think I really like pursued it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was just, it was just, I was just interested in contacting you. And I've seen, right, and I've seen the comments as well. Yeah. By the way, oh right, yeah. Some of them were like nasty comments yeah. that you were receiving. Yeah. So we go, it's going back to like trolls. I don't really know what an internet troll is. I, I hear people talk about these trolls, and I just think that you know they're just fucking plums that are just writing shit behind the screen. It's just sad people. Yeah. It's just sad people. Oh, I get it, mate. I'm fucking hell, mate. And it's it's it. it you, you've got to it's, if you're gonna put yourself on a platform. Yeah, you've got to expect oh, yeah. to become a target. Yeah, you know. So I, you know, I'm expecting. That I don't put myself up and get all sensitive and go, "Oh dear me, fucking yeah. hell, I said this." Look, see you later. Ta-da. If it's personal, it's going. Yeah. The comments going. If it's a question or you've got an opinion yeah. and you feel I need, to, well, I feel I need to respond to it, then I will. Yeah, you know. But when it's in a personal attack, then you're gone, mate. Yeah, and and, and that's simple. It's but then all they do is they change their name. Yeah, and then they're gone again. Yeah, and. 
that's what I'm saying about registering it. You've got to proof of ID. Do you think is that what they do, or, or do you feel he should do? Because they I think, do. yeah, you're right. I, I agree because that that's something that you know uh, needs to be addressed. I think going forward there is because there's a lot. The police are taking it more seriously now. Before they didn't, but now there's been a lot of prostitutions and things like that. And hopefully, people will never say, "Well, I can't get away with this anymore." No, you're right. I'm gonna get arrested. I'm gonna do time. Yeah, and it should be, you know, the, 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 I mean, that's that's the next thing, isn't it? You know, being arrested. So what's the difference? I'm not, I'm not saying this personally to you. Go on. What's the difference between me saying to you, you fat bastard on the street, or you fat bastard on the paper? What's the difference? It's not, Leslie. I'm not, I didn't mean that personally. I'm just saying, I'm using that as an example. I feel hurt. <laughs> I feel really hurt. I'm doubting. I, I've been going to Jimmy at a lot. No, right. I'm, not, I'm not saying you are. You know what I mean? I'm just thinking of a... <laughs> an example. An example, yeah. I'll talk to personal, to be fair. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what's the difference? There's none. So, if I told you that in the street, I'd be arrested for it. Why can't I can't be arrested for putting a bit, writing it down on a bit of paper or writing it down on the street? Yeah. It's the same, isn't it? So you're, you're commenting or writing something that's going to cause harm yeah. mentally. Yeah. Because yeah. most suicides nowadays, yeah. are, you know, are due to the um, verbally, yeah. verbally oh, definitely, abuse. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. Remember that saying growing up, and you know, a lot of people will go, sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. Yeah, it yeah, did. That's, that's sticks probably. and stones used to never fucking hurt me. Yeah. I could get battered and punched and fucking beaten and up and spat yeah. on, and, you know, I could take that. Yeah. But when you called me something horrible, yeah. you know, worse, I yeah. felt it, man. Yeah, it's worse. Yeah, you know, it can be worse. worse. So never mind that sticks and stones, shit. Yeah. Fucking hit me all day long. I'll take them yeah. fucking digs. The, bru- the bruises do. Yeah, but they call me, call me fucking names at, at a young age as well. Because yeah. when you're young, you know, you're, yeah, you're, you're impressionable. You're impressionable. Yeah. You, you. And you're conditioned to believe. Yeah. You know, you've had it from a young age. Yeah. You were really small. You were quite yeah. timid. And, yeah. You know, you know, like your brother said you were the wrong. Was you the smallest, actually? Like Yeah. yeah. So I was born... I was born f- about six weeks premature. Wow. I was b- uh, about two, I was a friend, I weighed about two pounds, four ounces. I don't weigh much more now, as it knows, but, but, yeah. I reckon you and I was bully. You yeah. know I was bully? Yeah. I reckon you and I was bully, I'd have a, yeah. a proper straightener. Yeah. He's, he's become a big meme now. Yeah. <laughs> he's about... You want some? <laughs> well, Tyson Fury's frightening me anyway. <laughs> My little boy, yeah. <laughs> he's the ringer for him. Um, so, you know, I really loved having a chat with you. You know, thanks Thank for Thank you time. for inviting me. I've been, I tell you what, I've done a few podcasts, but this is the best. Thank Mate, you very much. I appreciate that. But you know, I come to, as we're coming to the end of it, and I always say this on my podcast, and he pales away wisdom, and he, and he'd say to a younger Gordon Hill coming through the doors of life, what would you say to yourself coming through the doors of life? Now, if you could see you as a smaller, small boy. Do you know something? I'd value my youth a lot more because you, you're only young once and you, before you know it, it's over. You're an old bastard like me. Uh, but would I change anything to myself? No, because the mistakes I have made and I've made the oats, I don't buy them. And I don't think if I wouldn't have made them mistakes, I wouldn't be doing the charity stuff I'm doing now. I wouldn't be half the person I'm, I am now. So just enjoy youth. Just enjoy your life while you can. Just make the most of it. You only hear once. This is no dress rehearsal. Yeah, make, posi- the be- make, make it the best. Positive words. Yeah. And with that, thank you. Thank you. Brilliant.